Sorry there, just keeping the old uh, mine active with a little uh, game there, just keeping myself entertained and uh, and now level three while I wait for my uh, takeaways to arrive from the, the newly opened uh, restaurants. So uh, really, really exciting times. Uh, while we wait, we might as well work through some um, wines. So I've got some lovely wines here from the Rhone Valley, really historic region in uh, France, runs really long north to south very really varied in soils temperature um, and we've got some lovely wines which are going to express those changes as we work our way down so starting in the northern row we've got the uh, Yves Couleron uh, with his Viognier um, so Yves Couleron uh, based in Condrieu the home of Viognier um, and he's third generation so took over from his uncle so the winery wasn't really destined to come down from him, but he took the winery um, from when he took over in the mid-80s. They had about three hectares of vines throughout the Northern Rhone, um, and he's really pushed them on um, and has been a real pioneer for the region as it's sort of come into its its own. Um, so they now look after 52 hectares. So he's seen a massive growth over the last sort of 40 years when he's been looking after the winery um, um, and done a lot of re- great work um, uh, Condrieu itself, where, where Viognier is from, um, had a really sort of checkered past and got down to the point in so the 60s and 70s when there was only about uh, 10 hectares of vines planted, um, and that was really the only von- Viognier that was planted in the world. So it came really, really close to being lost. Um, it's through hard work, like people like Yves, who uh, who really got in, um, regenerated all these old um, terraced vineyards on the slopes of the Rhone River, um, and really championed Viognier as a great variety, which has now really taken off and can be seen sort of growing around the world. Um, so this one in itself um, is a VDP, so outside the Condria region. Um, so it doesn't actually take the Appalachian name, um, but comes from some really old vines, which they have access to. Um, and he does a really, really magical job with this Viognier. So Viognier can be really heated and perfumed. Um, where this one retains some uh, lovely freshness to it. So you get in there, on the nose it's got that lovely um, peach, um, vibrant sort of uh, floral notes as well, but they're really defined and really pure. Um, Here we go, and on the palate, so this is all hand harvested fruit, um, spends a long time on leaves, spends a little bit of time on skin contact as well during ferment, just to add some sort of texture and weight. while still retaining some freshness. So Viognier has a tendency to get a little bit uh, flabby and rich. Um, This has great texture to it, but a lovely freshness, which really, really holds it together. And that's the thing that really, really balances out nicely. So you get this lovely, rich, textured wine, but still retains some acid and some freshness, which gives it a lift and because it cleans the palate at the end there. Um, which Viognier is a low acid grape variety, so really, really hard um, to, to retain that acid. So Yves has done a really, really excellent job and produced a really, really high quality example of Viognier um, and a true sort of representation of what Condrieu can do, but at a more reasonable price. So this normally retails for $39. Um, and we've got an excellent fine wine sale at the moment. Um, which is actually its last day today, and this is down at about $31. So um, for some really high-quality Viognier, um, it's a really, really excellent price. So that's one to always watch. Um, We only get small allocations as it comes in each year, um, and it gets snapped up really, really quick. So this has just arrived, um, and is already flying out the door. So that's one really, really to watch. So um, I'm really going to look forward to enjoying that over the rest of the evening. Um, From there, we move on to the Mont Redon. And we move down into the southern Rhone. So as we move up from the um, the narrow valley in the northern Rhone, there's actually a, a 50 kilometre break between the northern and southern Rhone. Um, and that's where uh, the valley sort of broadens out and we've got um, more of a sort of flat valley floor that we work with um, and some really, really uh, big rocks and sort of stones. Really warm climate as well. So during the day, these vines get really, really hot. Um, and the Mont Redon that we have today is the Lirac Rosé. So this is across the river 
from uh, Chateau Neuf de Pape, which is probably the, the most famous uh, Southern Rhone appellation, um, and probably the really start of the appellation system in France was, was sort of based in Chateau Neuf de Pape, where they sort of settled the regulations for what they wanted to do the, with the region, and that was emulated elsewhere around the region. So, uh, Montrond Lyrac Rose, across the river from Chateau Neuf de Pape. Um, this wine's a Grenache Syrah blend. Um, and southern France is obviously really well known for, for rosé. You've got uh, Provence and those sort of really light, clean, and crisp sort of styles of rosé. Where this has a little bit more weight and texture to it. Um, definitely some richness there on the nose. Um, um, some strawberries, lovely texture as well. Um, the wine goes through no malolactic fermentation, but spends a long time resting on lees. So that um, no malo allows it to retain some, some really nice acidity, um, where the lees context adds that richness and that texture and really fills out the body of the wine. So this is a little bit more of a serious rosé. Um, can stand up to, to some lovely um, food pairings as well, maybe some chicken, um, even a little bit of light red meat. Um, a really, really excellent um, style of rosé that you can really sort of move past that um, uh, once you've enjoyed all those lovely Provence rosé sort of styles that are clean, crisp, maybe with your lunch salad. Um, if you still feel like a, a rosé in the evening, we're having some lovely sort of evenings now, I think this would be one to, to pick. And then from there, we jump across the river, back onto the same side as Chateau Neuf de Pape, and we have the Domaine Le Comblier, um, Thackeray's. So this is uh, just around um, an appellation just around the outside of Chateau Neuf de Pape um, and very very sort of similar style. Um, so you have a lot of the same red grape varieties planted there as well. Um, so we've got Grenache and Mouvedre in this blend. Um, and Vicarais is a great example of how the appellation system has developed over time, um, with Chateau Neuf de Pape sort of being the, the framework on which it was built for. Um, it, it really starts with, uh, in the southern Rhone, where you've got uh, Côte de Rhone, um, and then you get uh, into a sort of smaller bracket where you've got Côte de Rhone Village. Um, and then from there, Vicarais was a Côte de Rhone Village, and then it got moved up to its own separate appellation uh, in 1990. Um, so you move there. Oh yeah, we've got some lovely dense fruit to this wine. Uh, another family owned winery. Um, so third generation, the son is actually a trained geologist, uh, biodynamic as well, only organic sort of um, uh, sprays that are used here. So. Um, Really, really great for, for the soils, which they, they have there. Uh, produces a really rich sort of style. Um, great with some sort of hearty stews. It's got lovely tannic structure as well. Um, as we move into these slightly cooler evenings, this is um, a beautiful, beautiful wine to have. Mm. Um, and that um, Le Camelot is actually on sale at the moment for twenty three ninety nine, which is an excellent price for, for some really, really beautiful um, wine at this time. So um, that wraps up our quick little tour of uh, the Rhone Valley. Um, and we hopefully, uh, hopefully you get the chance to enjoy some of these lovely wines as we move into some slightly cooler evenings. I think these, uh, these really, really suit the, uh, the autumn weather. So enjoy.